Okay, now, <clears throat> pretty funny, right? Like, anytime someone comes up to the board, I don't know if you feel the way I used to feel when I was at school, and it's kind of like, please don't scrutinize my answer too much, but actually that's where you learn and taking on critical feedback. Not that I think there's gonna be too much today anyway. Um, it's one of the most important skills you can develop, not just as a mathematician, but like, just as a human being. So let's have a look together. Top one here, before we have a look at this red line of working here, let's just have a look at what you've been handed, right? Part of what you're all doing here in all of these questions is recognition. It's one of the differences between novices and experts. A novice looks at a question and is like, where do I begin with this, right? But an expert can quickly recognize, oh, I recognize this kind of problem, I know what's the appropriate tool, and then I can use it most efficiently. Can someone tell me what kind of object do we have here? It's implied, but I think you mostly have worked it out. I know you know, because you've done the working. Someone else tell me. It's a product, right? And it's always sneaky, right? That multiplication there is, is almost never written, partly because we have so many X's flying around that look like multiplication. So is this the right application of the appropriate rule? Before we even look at whether it's the right answer or not, is it the right rule to use, right tool for the job? It is, right? This is uh, how, what's the order we've done this in? So this is U and V, so we've gone U, V dash, V, U dash. Does that look like how it's panned out? Or did I swap them around? That's like U dash V, is that right? U dash V, happier? The order doesn't matter, as we've seen, because number one, you're adding, and number two, you're multiplying, both of which are... Does anyone remember, by the way? It's actually all the way back from five years ago, you learned the word starts with a C that indicates operations that can be changed in order. Does anyone remember? Has to do with if you were going for a long drive to work. We call that commuting, right? You can commute your different operations, and you get the same results, so the community of property. Have a look at this. What's actually done from this line to this line? Can anyone give me the name for this? It starts with an F. This is, yeah, go ahead. No one's giving it to me. This is factorization, right? So noticing that you could expand, of course, but there's not much to gain given that you've got this common factor of e to the x. That happens a whole lot when you're differentiating because it remains unchanged. And then from here to here, what's happened to this step? This is really important They actually know what's going on, that you can read back working and understand. What's the difference? Yeah, go ahead. It is a perfect square. X squared, I mean, the order that it's written in is a bit funny because that just came from a derivative, but X squared plus 2X plus 1, sure enough, is X plus 1 all squared. That's nice, isn't it? Are you happy? Looks okay. Question two, which I'm interested, people left till last. Um, I don't know if you found it more difficult, but it's true. Like, it's pretty much one line of working. Again, I'm going to ask you that same question. We use the product rule here. What's the appropriate rule for a question like this? I mean, it does look like something times something, but it's not, is it? What's going on? Come on, you give it to me. It's, again, another word. It starts with C. The language is really important. Yeah. This is chain rule, right? So this is our inside function in here, that x squared plus 3x. If you call that f of x, when you use the chain rule on a logarithmic function, do you remember? It's this nice, neat formula. It's f dash on f. That's what the derivative will look like. It's a bit small, but I think we can read it. 3x squared plus 3. Does that look like f dash to you? Thumbs up, and then the denominator remains unchanged. Logs and exponentials are really quite nice to deal with for the most part, okay? And then from there, there's not much to do, is there? There's not much, unlike in question one, where there was lots of nice neat factorization that would tidy things up. Uh, I think we all agree that you're pretty much done at that point. I suppose you could pull out a three and an X, but you don't get a lot of simplification off that anyway. All right, let's have a look at this one. Now, this is one of those interesting times where you really genuinely can choose multiple rules, right? What was the rule that was chosen in this case? And it might have been different to yours, but I want to know, what rule do you see was used? This is a product rule, very good. So you see this has been phrased as something times something, and then you've got this in index form, so everything kind of marches out. 1 minus log x over x squared is where we end up. Can I get some agreement? Or, yeah, a few nods, fantastic, okay? Now, would it have been simpler to go the other path? What's the other option you could have done, given how it's written at the moment? Could have done quotient rule, right? Call this u, call this v, 
you see you and you cannot avoid this fraction right so ending up with v u dash minus u v dash on v squared might have got you marginally faster to this x squared on the denominator and the other bonus is you can avoid negative indices. I don't like them because they make my brain hurt, but we got the right answer. So it's not like this is an illegitimate approach, um, but just the more working you have, the more error prone it is. So just be watchful. Okay, last one up here. Um, and I like that there was um, <laughs> a last minute course correction by the student who was putting this answer up. So well done on realizing, okay, I need to make some changes. The first thing I'm gonna ask is, and I, I'm only asking it now of all of you because I've signaled it like two or three times and you're probably like, Mr. Wu, get over it, right? This is why I'm not over it. Forget about the derivative for a moment here. There's a minor issue of notation that I think we can all do better that we commonly make. I've actually walked around and I've seen literally everyone in the room do this at least once. So if you did this, don't feel bad, but I'm still signaling it because I want us all to do it better. What's a minor piece of notation that was missing off of the working for this question? Did, I'll let you have a chance to redeem yourself. Go for it. Yeah, fantastic. So this, at this point here, and you can see by this mountain of working that results, something has changed, right? This is actually the derivative, not the original function. So please, 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 please say this. It matters a lot. This is just like our very first question. Product rule, yeah? Does it look like this is u, this is v? Have we done it right? What do you think? So this is u dash by the looks of it, and this is v. Does it check out? Yeah, looks okay. Here comes, this is v dash, and this is u. Also looks like it checks out, and then there's this one over x that goes in here, and so it all kind of neatly cancels with the indices. You happy with that? Is there any more you could do to simplify off of here? <laughs> 